Hello, this is Paul with another SQL Skills Insider demo video. This one's for the second of the September Insider newsletters. This one's coming to you from a hotel in the heart of the financial district in downtown New York, where we're on site for a couple of weeks with one of our clients. So in this demo, what I wanted to show you was how clustered indexes do not solve the inconsistent analysis problem. The read committed isolation level that SQL Server uses, one of the things that you can experience is the inconsistent analysis problem, where you can run two select queries back to back and you get two different results because of other operations that happen while the queries are running. So this is a pretty simple set of scripts that um, I'm giving you. I've got a set of instructions here to help you walk through it. And I'm gonna walk through it now and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and what's going on under the covers. So first off, I'm gonna create a database to play around with and create a very simple table with a clustered index and three rows. One Anderson, two Randall, and three Trip. So then what I'm gonna do is in a, another script, I'm going to use that database again, and then I'm gonna start an explicit transaction, and I'm going to change the last record so that its clustered index key has gone from a three to a four. So I'm changing the third record in our clustered index. And I've done it inside a transaction. So that's an open transaction. This transaction is now gonna be holding an exclusive lock on the third row in our clustered index. Now in yet one more connection, I'm gonna do a select count star. So actually let's make it a little more interesting. Let's do two select count stars back to back. So I go ahead and run that, and it's blocked. Okay. It's blocked because the select count star, it's gonna to need to acquire locks to read the rows from the table. If I go back to script number one, and I look at my the locks that are being hold, held, so I'm gonna use um, sys.dmtranlocks, and I'm gonna filter out database locks. What we're gonna see is, in terms of, let's kind of squish this stuff together so we can see what we're doing. Oops. What we're going to see is we have both queries. So the, the, the update query that I'm doing is holding uh, an intent exclusive table lock. It's also holding an intent exclusive page lock, and it's got an exclusive lock on the record that it's in the middle of updating. Now, what else is going on? My query, my scan, is taking an intent share table lock. It has an intent share page lock, and it's queued up waiting to get the share lock on the record so that it can count it. So my query is completely blocked. Now, if I then go ahead and while I've got all this running, I go ahead and I update one of the records. I'm gonna update the very first record in this table to a key value that's higher than everything else. So this record has actually already been counted by my select count star. But because I'm using read committed isolation level, the, the lock, the share lock that the select query momentarily held on that record is no longer held. And so I can quite happily go ahead and update that record. So my select count star is still blocked. If I then commit this update transaction, that's gonna release the exclusive row lock that's being held, and it's gonna allow my select count star to grab the share lock that it needs. Right, so you notice that script three is no longer executing. So if I go and have a look at what the output of script three is, I see that my first select count star returned four records, and my second one returned three. Now the count star of three is the correct one. The count star of four is incorrect. It actually counted the, the first record twice. It saw the record when C1 equals one. It dropped the lock on it. It got blocked on the third record and then I did an update and I set the cluster key value of the first record to be five. Now, whenever a, a key, an index key is updated in a non-clustered or a clustered index, SQL Server is forced to do a delete insert operation. And so the very first record was updated with a higher cluster key and was actually delete inserted on that same page and so my select count star saw the record both when C1 was equal to one and when C1 was equal to five. So the first select count star actually saw four records or so it thought. 
The second count star actually saw the correct number of records when everything else was quiesced on the system. So this just goes to show you that just using a non-clustered index isn't going to help you solve inconsistent analysis problems. The read committed isolation level, one of the things that's inherent in it is things like the read committed, sorry, the inconsistent analysis problem. So a pretty simple set of scripts just to show you the kind of programming challenges that you can run into with the operations you're doing on SQL Server concurrently. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks very much for being a SQL Skills Insider. Until next time, bye-bye.